Welcome back to Fox Recaps. Today, we're recapping the 2011 drama movie, Salmon Fishing in Yemen. As usual, spoilers ahead, so be ready. Let's begin. Harriet Shedwo Talbot, a British consultant representing the Sheikh of Yemen, writes an email to a well-renowned fishing scientist and expert Dr. Alfred Jones regarding a project that the Sheikh has been willing to accomplish for some while now. She writes that they want Dr. Jones to help create a salmon fishing project in Yemen. The Sheikh is willing to sponsor the entire project despite the incredible challenges that may arise during the process. Soon enough, the email arrives in the doctor's mail and he scoffs at the whole idea of the project. He still maintains his professionalism, however, and responds by explaining how absurd and crude the conditions would be in Yemen and how they could never be able to favor the survival of salmon. He resends the email back, expressing his sadness for not being able to head the project. Alfred might have thought that was the end of it, but he was far from mistaken. Elsewhere, the press officer of the British Prime Minister, Mrs. Maxwell, gets a call in the middle of the night and is informed of the brutal attack on the mosque in Afghanistan. The British forces had been actively deployed in that region, which meant that this attack could cause a negative effect on the Prime Minister's reputation. She quickly races to her office and starts searching for topics that could show a healthier relationship between the Arab people and the British and divert the people from the attack. Upon scouring through countless ideas, she settles on the salmon fishing project which had only been proposed a few days earlier. Maxwell quickly calls Alfred's boss Bernard to make sure that the project goes ahead. Unable to refuse the request from the press officer, Bernard pressures Alfred to go and at least have a meeting with Miss Harriet. Alfred then goes to meet with the lady but has already made up his mind about the failure of the project and has no intention of taking up their offer to lead it. He meets up with Harriet in her office and explains how there was no water in the region of Yemen. Without water, fish cannot survive. All the while, the naive man had been pointing to Saudi Arabia on the map. But even though Harriet corrects him and explains that Yemen receives plenty of rainfall and even has a dam to maintain water during the summer, Alfred is a lost cause. He simply cannot take up the foolish task of taking fish from England to raise them in a desert. Alfred returns back to his office and tells his boss that he would no longer entertain Harriet and her foolish ideas. But Bernard already has a plan set for him. The man gives Alfred a choice. Either resign from his post or head up the salmon fishing team with double the salary, which was being offered by the Sheikh. At first, Alfred decides to resign, unwilling to let go of his pride. But when he heads back home, his wife, Mary, tells him that they needed him to keep the job for the pension that would come later. Reluctantly, Alfred agrees, but he decides to make the project ten times harder if it already wasn't. Elsewhere, Harriet's boyfriend, whom she had met only a few weeks ago, Robert, is drafted into the army in Afghanistan, and he's forced to leave for the place immediately. He asks Harriet to wait for him while he's gone, even though they haven't been together for long. Harriet, who'd been smitten by the man from the day they met, agrees. The next day in another meeting with Harriet, Alfred purposely lays out a sarcastic yet theoretically possible project for breeding the salmon in Yemen. He even tells her an estimated budget of 50 million pounds off the top of his head to throw her off. However, Harriet listens to everything with much interest and doesn't seem to be phased by the amount that Harriet quoted. Alfred is dumbfounded that Harriet had taken all of his foolish ideas seriously, so he decides to throw in a few more demands just to see her reaction. He asks that she arrange a meeting with the engineers of the Three Gorges Dam in China, another one with the British Oxygen Company, and finally one more with the Russian aircraft company Antonov. With all these demands, Alfred had hoped to shock her at least, but Harriet accepts all the offers and tells him that she would see what she can do. Amazed and dumbfounded, Alfred races to his home to explain all this to his wife, but she simply has no time for him. She had landed a job in Geneva and hadn't even asked him before taking it. It had been quite a few years that they were starting to drift apart, and yet Alfred is sad to let her go. 
The next day, Maxwell, Alfred, and Bernard sit down to have a meeting, where once again Alfred reiterates how ridiculous the whole plan was. But as soon as Maxwell learns that there are over two million fishermen, all she can think of is the votes that the Prime Minister could pull in the next election. She commands Bernard to give Alfred whatever he wants and leaves. What Alfred wants is 10,000 freshwater salmon from the rivers of Scotland and England, which Bernard needs to request from the environmental department of the country. While Bernard goes ahead with the request, Alfred visits the Sheikh's house along with Harriet. There, the two spend some time with the Sheikh, who turns out to be quite the fishing enthusiast. He's also a massive follower of Alfred and his work, and even uses the fly hook that Alfred designed for fishing. The two men spend the day fishing in the Sheikh's estate and getting to know how similar they are in their love for fishing. At night, however, when they discuss the project, Alfred once again expresses his concern about its authenticity. He still believes that it's almost impossible for them to carry out the project, which would almost definitely lead to a lot of economic loss and be a waste of time. However, the Sheikh is adamant to make his dream come true and is willing to test out the project regardless of the flaws. After a few days, while in his office, Alfred is suddenly visited by Harriet, who had managed to arrange a meeting with the Chinese engineers from the Three Gorges. After a short meeting with the engineers, Alfred manages to convince them to join their team. The project was going surprisingly well for the most part, and so Alfred and Harriet go to get dinner. As the two chat, Harriet suddenly gets a call that her boyfriend was missing in action in Afghanistan. She gets incredibly sad and returns back to her apartment. For days, she ignores all calls from Alfred and the whole team and locks herself in her room, constantly calling the barracks to see if there was any report of Robert. One day, Alfred visits her in her apartment and confronts her about her absence from her job. He tells her that she shouldn't lose hope because perhaps Robert was still alive out there. Alfred also convinces her to join him and the Sheikh on their trip to Yemen, where the final part of their project would take place. In Yemen, the project has been going on at a rapid pace, and the dam and the fishery have already been constructed. However, it's evident that the local rebel lords are not happy with the Sheikh's project. The Sheikh explains that the local lords believe he's bringing Western culture into the Yemen land and destroying their heritage by creating such an extravagant project. Regardless of all the protests, though, the Sheikh believes that the project will ultimately help the people of Yemen and wants to continue with the project. Back in England, Bernard finally manages to convince the Environmental Board for the permit to take 10,000 live salmon that Alfred had requested, and everything is ready to go. However, as soon as the news spreads in the media, the entire fishing community of England is outraged by the idea that almost half of their fish population was being transported to some distant desert land for some foolhardy project. Every magazine and news outlet is filled with outrage from the fishermen all over the country, and this doesn't sit well with the Prime Minister's public image. So, the next time Maxwell goes to meet with a sheikh, she announces that he would no longer get the freshwater fish from the river. Instead, the government was willing to offer farm bread fish. Alfred and the Sheikh are furious, and Alfred even threatens a resignation. But Maxwell doesn't seem to care. The farm bread fish would never be able to swim upstream like their wild counterparts, and thus the fishery would most likely fail. A disheartened Alfred returns back home and finds that his wife had returned back from her job. However, by now, Alfred had already started to have feelings for Harriet, and he truthfully accepts it as well. Mary gets mad and tells him that it won't even take six months for Alfred to come back to her. It was in his DNA to sulk and return back to her, and he could never change that. This, although with great pain, makes Alfred realize that perhaps even the farmed fish would in fact swim upstream because of their inherent nature. The next time he goes to the Sheikh, he tells him that perhaps farmed salmon could work as well, and they didn't need to stop the project. The Sheikh is satisfied with Alfred's faith, and the project moves ahead as planned. On the day of the inauguration, the sluices and water structures created by the Chinese engineers are ready and fitted with oxygen tanks from the British Oxygen Company. Finally, the 10,000 fish are brought there by the Russian airship, 
and they're poured into the artificial habitat they had created. Finally, when the sluices are opened, the fish, as Alfred had predicted, eventually start swimming upstream just like their wild counterparts. Everyone is ecstatic, and even the British photographers are there to take pictures of the occasion. However, the rebels had planned to make a mess of the Sheikh and his ambition, and one of these rebels sneaks into the dam to unlock the gates. Suddenly, a large stream of water races to the place where Alfred, the Sheikh, and many of his men were fishing happily. The flood absolutely decimates the whole area, and almost kills the Sheikh and Alfred. The two men somehow manage to escape and save themselves, but the whole project had been ruined. There was nothing left, their months of hard work was gone. Just then, a salmon flies from the water. Some of them had still managed to survive, and there was still hope. If despite all this, the salmon still managed to survive, then the project wasn't a failure after all, they just needed to start all over. Alfred decides that he wants to stay back and continue the project because he now knew this was where he belonged. He vows to finish the project and this time make it with the local help so that everyone feels involved and make it a local project rather than a western one. Harriet decides to stay back as well and the Sheikh, well, he is more than ready to get back at it once more. That was all from the video, I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this, and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.